Capitol building in Washington, D.C. was first used in Congress in 1800. But with all of the partisan gridlock in today's government, what lessons can Congress learn from the history of the Capitol and those who previously served? Hello and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly and I'm joined by Ron Saracen. He is president of the United States Capitol Historical Society. Thank you so much for being with us today. Happy to be with you. Now, George Washington actually selected the site for the Capitol. Tell me a little bit about why he chose this spot. He chose the spot because it's on the top of a hill. It was then called Jenkins Hill. And we're not sure why because we have no idea who Mr. Jenkins might have been. <laughs> but uh, he and Pierre Lanfant came to the, the site and they selected the spot and Pierre Lanfant wrote a letter back to Washington and said it's a pedestal waiting for a monument, this plateau they were going to put the building on. And, uh, and it dominated the city at that point, or it was intended to dominate the city. Washington and Jefferson also wanted a very European looking building, which is what they got. They wanted one out of stone and had to send for stone carvers in Scotland and England and so forth, because we didn't have that talent here at the time. Now, you teach <clears throat> others about the history of the building, and you have seen it up close and personal, obviously, right. and you served in Congress. What is it that you think people are surprised to learn about the building when they see it up close and personal? Well, I, I think they, they are a little bit surprised at the history of it, it itself, the fact that it has been here from, from the very beginning of the country, and, uh, and, and, that, uh, and that the government actually is reflected by the, sh the shape of the building. You have the House on one side and the Senate on the other side, and this is the legislative branch. It's the, it's the primary part of the Constitution, the legislature is, and, uh, and it's reflected here. The building itself was supposed to take the place of the crown when we change from a, a, a king and, and, uh, and, and their subjects to, uh, to our form of government. And so it, uh, it really does represent the democracy, the, uh, the republic that we're in. What can Congress learn about the building itself, how it's set up, and the history of it in terms of its growth and, and, and what it represents? Well, as, they, as the members walk through the building, they get to look at all the artwork that exists in there, and there's an awful lot of it. But they're reminded of the, of the Constitutional Convention because there's a huge painting uh, celebrating that. They're reminded when they're in the rotunda that the, uh, of the Declaration of Independence. Uh, they can look into the dome and see that great fresco that's up there called the Apotheosis of Washington and, and are reminded then of the, of the great uh, contribution that George Washington himself made to the, to the founding of the country. And uh, so the, the history is there and they're constantly reminded of it and reminded why they are there, why they're serving in, in Congress and what their responsibilities are. It's grown physically over the years. What were some <coughs> turning points as to when it was, when certain wings were added and why it had to grow at all? Well, it had to grow because the country grew. We ended up with more mo members of the House, more members of the Senate. Uh, when it first started, they moved everybody in one little part of the building, the original Senate section, which uh, then housed the House, the Senate, the Supreme Court, the Library of Congress, everybody in that one little part of the building. And then they built the House section, moved people in there, and then they started to reconstruct the first section because it had really been poorly built. And then the British came and burned it in 1814. They had to start all over again. Then they added the center section, the dome. Uh, and, uh, and an original smaller dome, and then they added the big dome in the 1850s and 60s. Uh, they added the wings in the 1850s with the current House wing and the current Senate wing and the north and south end of the building. We have about so, 20 seconds left. What's the most recent addition to the building? The Visitor Center. Okay. And two million people a, a year are now walking through the Capitol building. With, they're going about ready to celebrate their 11th million, 11 millionth visitor in the Capitol Visitor Center, which is under the, the, the east plaza of the building. It, it almost doubles the size of the building, and it's all underground. That's the latest addition to the building. That is amazing. Thank you so much for being with us today and sharing with us the history of the Capitol. Good seeing you. Thank you. I enjoyed it. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly.